Hello and welcome back to my channel. So today you will be learning a lesson called a village cricket match which is a very interesting story and what happens in that game. It's a very interesting wonderful story. So this cricket match is played by two teams. The people of Forden Den. It's a small village and the people of London. And this is to specify that the pictures that I have used in this video are just for your easy understanding of the story. The crisis was now desperate. The fieldsmen drew nearer and nearer to the batsmen, excepting the youth in the blue jumper. Livingstone balanced himself on his toes. Mr. Shakespeare Pollock hopped about almost on top of the batsmen and breathed excitedly and audibly. Even the imperturbable Mr. Southcott discarded the piece of grass which he had been chewing so steadily. Mr. Hodge took himself off and put on the major, who had by now somewhat lived down the quart and a half. So the story begins with the match which has already come to an end. It's almost at the end. And the crisis was desperate. That is, they are at the final round of the match. And all the fieldsmen are coming nearer and nearer to the batsman, which implies that the batsman is about to bat. And Livingstone is balancing himself on his toes because it's so exciting. Like, who is going to win? Even Mr. Southcott, he was chewing a piece of grass and he threw that too and he was all ready for the match. The batsmen crouched down upon their bats and defended stubbornly. A snick through the slips brought a single. A ball which eluded the publisher's gigantic pads brought a bye. A desperate sweep at a straight half volley sent the ball off the edge of the bat over third man's head and in normal circumstances would have certainly scored one and possibly two. But Mr. Harcourt was on guard at third man and the batsman, by nature cautious men, one being old and the sexton, the other, the postman, and therefore a government official, were taking no risks. Then came another single of a mishit, and then an interminable period in which no wicket fell and no run was scored. It was broken at last disastrously, for the postman struck the ball sharply at Mr. Pollock, and Mr. Pollock picked it up and in an ecstasy of zeal flung it madly at the wicket. Two overthrows resulted. Now the batsman was defending himself and finally he got a snick through the slips and he got a single run. Then the ball eluded the publisher's pad and he got the bye. What's a bye? In cricket, a bye is a type of extra. It is a run scored by the batting team when the ball has not been hit by the batter and the ball has not hit the batter's body. As it was a lot of pressure on the batsman, he hit the ball but it was guarded by the third man, that was Mr. Harcourt. And the batsman both were not taking any risk. One was a postman and the other one was a sexton. Who is a sexton? Sexton is a person employed to act as a caretaker of a church and its contents and graveyard. Both didn't want to take any risk. Then came another single because of a mishit. And then there was a period in which there was no wicket fallen as well as no run was scored. It was a maiden over. Finally, it was broken by the postman. So the postman struck the ball so hard at Mr. Pollock that he picked it up with full of excitement and he threw it at the wicket. And because of that, two overthrows were resulted. The scores were level and there were two wickets to fall. Silence fell. The gaffers, victims, simultaneously of excitement and senility, could hardly raise their pen pots, for it was past six o'clock and the front door 
of the three horseshoes was now as wide open officially as the back door had been unofficially all afternoon. Now the scores were level and there were only two wickets to fall and there was complete silence everywhere in the entire field. Everyone were excited about what's going to happen and it was almost past six o'clock and the front door of the three horseshoes it is a hotel or you can say it as a cafe it was open officially because the entire afternoon it was unofficially opened from the back door the major his red face redder than ever and his chin sticking out almost as far as the Napoleonic Mr. Ogilvy's bowled a fast half volley on the leg stump. The sexton, a man of iron muscle, from much digging, hit it fair and square with the middle of the bat, and it flashed like a thunderbolt, waist high, straight at the youth in the blue jumper. With a shrill scream, the youth sprang backwards out of its way and fell over on his back. Immediately behind him, so close where the fieldsmen clustered, stood the mighty Boone. There was no chance of escape for him, even if he had possessed the figure and the agility to perform back somersaults, he would have lacked the time. He had been unsighted by the youth in the jumper. The thunderbolt struck him in the midriff like a red-hot cannonball upon a Spanish galleon and with the sound of his drumstick upon an insufficiently stretched drum. With a fearful oath, Boone clapped his hands to his outraged stomach and found that the ball was in the way. He looked at it for a moment in astonishment and then threw it down angrily and started to massage the injured spot while the field rang with applause at the brilliance of the catch. Now the major, his red face was getting redder. He was getting angry. Like there was so much of pressure. Like who is going to win? What is going to happen? And Mr. Ojalvi, he bowled a fast half volley on the leg stump. Half volley is a ball pitched so far up to the batsman that he can drive it fractionally after it has hit the ground without having to move forward. And leg stump is the stump on the side of the wicket, the same side as the batsman's legs. Each stump is referred to by a specific name, that is off stump, middle stump and leg stump. So now the sexton who was batting, he was a man of iron muscle and he hit it so hard with the middle of the bat and the ball flashed like a thunderbolt and it went straight at the youth in the blue jumper. Now with a huge scream, with a scream, this youth, he sprang backwards and he fell over on his back and immediately behind him, there was this mighty boon, very strong one and there was no chance of escape for him. Even if he was possessed by some evil spirit and he could perform back somersaults, he could not have the time. And the thunderbolt, that ball, came and hit him in the midriff, that is the mid-stomach, and it hit him like a red cannon ball. He clapped his hands to his stomach, the outraged stomach, because it was paining, and he found that the ball was in the way. He had caught the ball and he was in complete shock, astonishment that he caught the ball. He was in complete shock and for a moment he was just looking at it and then he realized and he threw it down angrily and he started to massage the area where he was hit by the ball and the entire crowd rang with applause. They were so happy for the brilliancy of the catch. Donald walked up and shyly added his congratulations. Boone scowled at him. I didn't want to catch the darn thing, he said sourly, massaging away like mad. But it may save the side, ventured Donald. Blast the side, said Boone. 
Donald went back to his place. Now Donald, he walked up shyly and he came to congratulate Boone. And Boone was in such an angry mood, he scowled at him. And he said, I didn't want to catch this stupid thing. And he was massaging the area still. So Donald said, maybe it will save our side. So Boone was like, you know, blast the side. So Boone was like, I don't really care about who is going to win or not. And Donald went back to his place. The scores were level and there was one wicket to fall. The last man in was the blacksmith, leaning heavily upon the shoulder of the baker who was going to run for him and limping as if in great pain. He took guard and looked around savagely. He was clearly still in great rage. Now the scores were level and there was only one wicket to fall. And the last man who came in was the blacksmith. And he was heavily leaning upon the shoulder of the baker who was going to run for him because blacksmith was limping in pain. So he had a person to run in case of him. So the blacksmith came and took his position and he saw here and there like he just looked around and it was very clear that he was in rage, he was in anger as well as pain. The first ball he received, he lashed it widely and hit straight up into the air to an enormous height. It went up and up until it became difficult to focus on it properly against the deep cloudless blue of the sky and it carried with it the hopes and fears of an English village. Up and up it went, then at the top it seemed to hang motionless in the air, poised like a hawk, fighting as it were a heroic but forlorn battle against the chief invention of Sir Isaac Newton, and then it began its slow descent. So the first ball he received, he hit it wildly and he hit straight up into the air in an enormous height, in a huge height. And it went up and up in the sky and it was very difficult to focus where the ball was. It kind of disappeared in the sky. And along with it was the hopes and the fears of the English village. And it went up in the sky. It hanged in the air for some time, motionless. And like an eagle coming down to catch its prey. The ball descended down and I do hope you have understood the lesson till here. In case you have any doubts, you can comment below. The next part of this story will be continued in the next video. Until then, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you and stay safe.